there is so much to love about living in an RV or a van or living a mobile nomadic life. There's so much to love about it. And I love my life of freedom, being able to pick up and go wherever I want, being able to meet new people and talk to people all across the country. I just had this conversation with someone just a couple days ago. You know, I have met the biggest Trump supporters and have been able to sit down and have coffee with them and listen to them and talk. You know, most of you know that I'm not a Trump supporter. You know, I've been able to meet like-minded people, people who have vastly different views from me. I've been able to camp in the middle of places that might have otherwise scared me and get to meet the people and found out that they're very friendly. I mean, there's just so much to love about my nomadic life. At the same time, there's a lot that can really burn you out if you're not careful. So what I'm gonna share with you today is what I've learned along the way and how I forget, that's basically what it is. I forget to take care of myself. I'm like a steamroller. Can any of you relate to this? I'm like, must go. I, I'm like, I wanna get everything done now so that I can relax later. The problem with that is, especially if you live my life, you know, if you live a life like I do, and not just my life, I mean, this, you can probably relate to this even if you don't live in an RV. The problem is, if you are a steamroller, I just wanna get through it and get it done and roll over everything, mostly myself along the way, um, there's always something after that. You take care of one thing and there's always something else. So the thing is you're constantly in steamroller mode, you're never in take care of yourself mode. And that's really, I think the biggest lesson that I'm gonna share with you today is learning how to take care of yourself even in the middle of all the crises that you're gonna encounter with breakdowns and tires and trying to find camp and there not being a lot of camp. That's basically what I'm gonna to talk to you about today is how can you find the little ways along your RV life to take care of yourself. And it all starts for me with how I start my day. I have been learning more this year that it's best for me to just act like I'm staying here. Just act like I'm gonna stay here today and do my stretches, get a walk, walk around and wander around and enjoy my coffee. Those are the things that I need to do to take care of myself and it's all about how I start my day. It's kind of like my meditation for me. And maybe that's what you need to do. You know, even if you have a busy 10 hour day of travel, you have gotta remember to take care of yourself, whether that's meditation or exercise or going for a run or praying or whatever you do, you need to find that time to do what is gonna make you right. Because the thing is that no matter, I have encountered this more in the last year than I have, I think in any time in my RV life, or maybe it's just more, I'm more aware of it because I, I am suffering a little bit of burnout, is that, I might have 10 hours of driving ahead of me because at the end of that 10 hour drive is a camp. I can't tell you how many times that that drive, at the end of that drive, that camp has not worked out. So I've had to go to plan B. And the more I'm in go, 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 not taking care of myself mode, the harder it's gonna be to deal with that at the end of the day. But if I start my day by taking care of myself, by following my routine, if I take time along the way, and I've talked about this, if I, and not only taking like a quick five minute break, okay, Sadie, let's go run, let's go play, let's hurry up, let's get back on the road, which is what I tend to do, but really stopping, taking an hour, wandering around, just staring at the trees, you know, going for a walk, that's what clears my head. Doing those things are gonna help you in the end be able to handle whatever the road brings you. But when you're wrapped so tightly in a knot because you're like, go, 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 me, I'm speaking of myself, I have to go, I have to get this done because at the end of the day, I'll relax, right? It's like, I need to get this done now and I'll relax later. Later never comes sometimes. So that's the really biggest tip I have for you today is just remember to take care of yourself. Because for me also, when I start getting stressed and anxious and when I'm not taking care of myself, I start making really poor decisions. Where was I? I was near Portland, Maine recently, and stay tuned, those videos are coming along with beautiful New England in the fall. And I, uh, I was, knew I was going to Portland, Maine. I needed just a one or two night layover. I needed a place just to stop and do nothing and work. And I was like, I don't care where it is. I just need a place. So I, I booked a campground. And 
because I was stressed and because I was in go, go, go mode, I did not take my time to thoroughly vet the right campground for me. I chose a resort. How many of you, an RV park resort, how many of you have ever stayed in one of those? It's like Disneyland for campers. They're packed in. The first night wasn't so bad, but the second night I was literally surrounded within five feet on all sides. I was basically surrounded by families coming in. There were parties, they hung lights. There was Halloween decorations and literally woke up at 7.30 the next morning to screaming kids, literally screaming, <laughs> literally screaming kids. Now, for some people that may not be a big deal, but I'm an introvert. I've said that a million times. I am an introvert and I can be an extrovert. I can talk, I can hang out, I can have fun, I can be in loud, noisy situations, but I need time to recover. I need quiet time, I need solitude, I need alone time. That's how an introvert recharges so that we can go out and face the world again. So you have to remember that if you're an introvert, and an introvert doesn't mean that you're antisocial, it doesn't mean that you're a hermit, it just, the, different, the main difference between an introvert and an extrovert is how you recharge yourself. An extrovert recharges by being out with people. One of my best friends is an extrovert. She, when she's feeling depleted, she needs to go out and hang out with people. Oh my gosh, not me. When I'm depleted, I need to be alone. I need to go for a walk. I need to be with my dog. I need to, that's just how I recharge. That's the difference between an extrovert and an introvert. Yeah, some introverts can be more quiet than others. And my, my therapist tells me, you know, that I can kind of go both ways. I can be very extroverted. You saw me, you know, in the meet and greets. When I'm around people who are very positive and high energy, I can be very extroverted. But then I need to go and, and recharge. An extrovert could keep going on that level. They could keep going. They could keep going. They could keep socializing. They can keep being in a party. They can keep being surrounded by people. They can go, 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 go. But an introvert can only handle so much of that before they need to go be by themselves and recharge. So it's really important to know that if you're an introvert before you go on the road and before you make plans for being out in civilization. For me, the longer I'm in the forest, the more time I spend in the forest, in quiet places like this, the, the harder, the louder, the more chaotic civilization seems. So when I booked that resort campground, it was hell. It just, you know, the, it defeated the whole purpose. I was supposed to go there to relax and get some quiet time where I could work. You know, and I knew I'd be surrounded by people, but I didn't know I'd be surrounded by screaming kids. So again, I was in go, go, go mo mode that I didn't, I, I wasn't thinking, I didn't take the time to really consider what I was doing. So I was making poor decisions. So that's all part of burnout. When you're burnout, you're gonna make poor decisions. And my burnout may not be the same as your burnout. My solutions may not be the same as your solutions. But I think just the, I think no matter who you are, you can get burnout on the road life. A lot of miles, a lot of driving. You know, driving is tiring. It's tiring. And you just have to learn to take care of yourself. Take every moment. No, not even take every moment. Make every moment. You have to make the time. You know, life and challenges and RV life and the road and your dog and your job aren't going to just say, here, here's some time. Go. You have to take it. You have to make the time. You have to be in charge of your life and in charge of your mental health and in charge of your energy and you have to make the time. Make a conscious effort to say, okay, you know what? I'm gonna make time every day to do what I need to do to feed me, to charge me. Whether that's being alone to recharge as an introvert or whether that means going out and peopling if you're an extrovert. Every day, I'm gonna make a conscious effort to get what I need to soothe myself, to take care of myself so that I can handle whatever the road gives me. And the last thing I think that can really help with road burnout is taking some time off the road. I recently took three days, rented a cabin uh, on a gorgeous little 
bay up in uh, north of Portland, Maine. The videos are coming and I got to just be in a cabin and take a shower and sleep in a bed and you know it was really nice. There were people there you know but they were really friendly people. I really enjoyed it. So sometimes beating road burnout means just getting off the road for a while. So I got off the road for three days. I was chomping really to get back in my RV and uh, you know whatever that might mean for you maybe that means renting an apartment for a month or renting a cottage for a month or staying in a campground for a month or going to a long-term visitor area which is an LTVA and those are mostly on BLM lands mostly I've seen them in Arizona you pay 180 bucks I think for the year or six months and you don't have to move every two weeks so that's an option too. If you're sick of the road, just find a place where you can just settle, where you can just stay put for a while. And a long-term visitor area is a perfect way to do that. It's inexpensive. I think it's maybe $180. I'll put it here. I'll look it up while I'm editing. I think it might be $180 for six months or something like that. I know some of you know, some of you stay at them. But uh, yeah, so take care of yourself. Get off the road if you need to get off the road. Make sure you're taking care of yourself emotionally, physically, and mentally so that you're not making poor decisions. So that when you do make a choice, you know, to get off the road or where you're going to camp next, you're making those choices with a clear mind and you're not making rash decisions out of stress and anxiety like I have done so that you wake up surrounded by screaming four-year-olds. <laughs> which defeated the whole purpose. I spent uh, 120 bucks to camp there and it defeated the whole purpose. So um, just another real talk here about real life. And this, does, this applies not only to RV life. I think this applies to everybody who has a busy life and forgets to slow down and take care of themselves. It can be really hard. We put, you know, many of us put everything else and everybody else ahead of our own needs and we just forget to take care of ourselves. And um, so I hope that was helpful, not just for RVers and wannabe RVers, but for just people in general. And Sadie and I are just going to go on and enjoy our morning. <laughs> we got this beautiful little creek next to us. I got to hear this all night outside my window. It's important to do that every once in a while, completely unplug. Nature heals if you let her. All right, hope you found that helpful. I will see you soon. Stay tuned Sunday night for another excerpt of Upper Peninsula, Michigan. I went to Gay, Michigan. Oh, awesome, awesome, awesome. Beautiful spot. That's where I had the big tire fiasco, so I'm going to show you that spot. And uh, make sure you subscribe to my channel. Check your notifications. Share my videos with your friends who are like-minded and, um, you know, might be interested in, in what I have to say. And I'll see you next time. I appreciate each and every one of you. In the meantime, be happy, be free, and be kind. I'll see you soon. Okay. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. <laughs> Sadie's not burnout. Sadie's never burnout.